Greetings from the Appalachian Christian Center, Peterstown, West Virginia. I am Pastor Michael Biggs. Good to be back with you again today. I'd like to read a one verse of scripture out of Matthew chapter 5, reading verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Uh, last week's message, last Wednesday and last Sunday morning's message was on joy in peace. Uh, the scripture that we read said, you shall go out with joy and be led with peace. We all want joy and peace in our lives. We, we don't like lives that are filled with chaos and turmoil and confusion and, and things. We, we don't like to be unhappy in life. We want to be joyful and happy and we want to have that peace and calm uh, in our lives. Our, our scripture here is uh, from what we call the Beatitudes. Uh, the, the word beatitude means uh, supreme blessedness or happy. Uh, unfortunately, today, instead of happiness, we see a lot of sadness in the world. We see a tremendous amount of people who are unhappy or not satisfied with their life. Uh, we see uh, disappointment. We see depression on the rise. And unfortunately, which often is followed by a rise in the number of cases of suicide. Um, but, you know, um, here in, in this list of, of things that are listed that Jesus has uh, spoken about in Matthew chapter 5, again, what we call the Beatitudes, these things uh, make up what, what is, again, extremely blessed or happy. Again, that's what Beatitudes means. Uh, the Amplified Bible, which is a, a, a translation of the Bible, it takes the words... <coughs> And it uh, adds uh, words to clarify the word, the meaning of the word. And when it says blessed or happy is, that word in the Amplified Bible is clarified by saying the word blessed is an enjoying inevitable happiness, spiritually prosperous with life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, regardless of of our outward conditions. <clears throat> you see, many times we base our happiness, our joy, our, our feelings on what's going on around us in life and, and instead of being focused upon God and what God is doing in our life and the, the blessings that we're going to receive, if maybe not in, in this moment, but in time and particularly in the life yet to come. I, I thought about the word beatitudes, and it looks like it is the word be and then attitude. Uh, the word attitude is a settled way of thinking or feeling about someone or something, especially one that reflects a person's behavior. Our attitude will determine our happiness. If we have, if our way of thinking uh, uh, about <clears throat> life in general. Uh, if we're focused on what's going on around us, that forms an, an attitude of many times of sadness, of depression, of loneliness. Uh, if we're focused on the things uh, of heaven, the things of God, then we're going to have a more joyful outlook on life. Uh, today, uh, we're only looking at one of the Beatitudes, which again, from verse 9 said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. One of the things in life which causes us to lose joy is strife. Strife is anger or bitter uh, disagreement over fundamental issues or conflicts. And we find a great deal of conflict in the world today. This is uh, filtered in the lives as a, of a Christian as well as the world. Yet God's word tells us as his children, as Christians, that we are to be peacemakers. Um, strife, again, anger or bitter disagreement over fundamental issues. It's a conflict. Disagreement, conflict, those things bring strife into our lives. Those things cause us to lose joy with disagreement and conflict. Bitterness often enters into the picture. And, and bitterness is a great tool of, of, the, of the devil. Bitterness can quickly rob us of our joy 
or happiness. When, when we begin to focus upon a disagreement or a conflict we have, many times we call it we hold a grudge. We, we see a person and it constantly reminds us of a disagreement that we had, something that we can't get along on. And, and over time, that disagreement ends up building up into bitterness within us. But the writer of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12 tells us, that we are to pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. And then he goes on to say in verse 15, he says, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. Bitterness, he says, causes trouble. Anytime we allow bitterness in our life, we're going to have troubles and problems because that's just what bitterness does in our life. It causes these things. It causes trouble. And then he says you become defiled. It ends up defiling us in our life. It separates us from God. Paul wrote in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 that all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. You see, bitterness, along with these other things that are mentioned there, it is part of the old man. These things are to be put off, be it put out of our lives. We are to put on, the, Paul tells us over in, in Ephesians and in Colossians as well, he tells us to put off the old man with his deeds and all these things are part of the old man. And then he tells us to put on this new man, this new man which is clothed in Christ. You know, we look at Jesus' life and how often did Jesus show forth any bitterness or wrath or anger, or clamor, or evil speaking. These things weren't in Jesus' life because he was the walking, living example of the new man that you and I are to be. First off, we find peace with God through Jesus Christ when we repent of our sins and we receive Him as the Lord and Savior of our life. There's a newness that we uh, experience by receiving Christ. You know, second, we need to find peace with ourselves. We need to release things in our life, letting go. There are many people that just hold on to something. They hold on to something in their past or they hold on to that grudge that they're having with, with someone else. It's just like, I, I can't let it go. I, I, I just can't get beyond it. I can't get over it. We've got to learn to let go of things and let God have control in our life. And then third, we need to make peace with others through forgiveness. You know, if we're holding a grudge against someone else, we need to learn to forgive them. Even if they've done us wrong, even if they've done something to harm us and hinder us, hurt us in some way, we need to forgive them and move on. It's been said, and I believe it's true, that unforgiveness is like drinking poison and then expecting the other person to die. Unforgiveness only harms us. It robs us of our joy. You know, again, in, in this beatitude that we read, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Do we strive in life to make peace, or do we strive in life to cause stress and aggravation and strife in our own lives as well as others? <clears throat> the word peacemaker is made up of two Greek words, the, the first one meaning to pacify or to bring about peace. And the second word, it, it, it has to do without delay. It's something we need to do immediately. If there's something in our lives that we need to let go of, some something that we've grown bitter over, we need to immediately get rid of that. We, we need to not think about it, not put it off to tomorrow, but we need to immediately, without delay, get rid of those things in our life that we might have peace. Are you a peacemaker? Do you strive to make peace with others, with God, with yourself? Are you called a son or a daughter? Are you referred to as a child of God because you strive to make peace? I pray that you have the peace that passes all understanding. I pray that you have the peace that comes from knowing God. And I pray that whatever it is in your life that would hinder you from having peace, that you will let it go tonight or this day sometime throughout this day that you will let it go and, and that you'll find that peace and joy that comes from knowing God 
and knowing that all is well with your soul and your Savior. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this day, for your many blessings. And Father, we pray that you'll continue to bless your children with peace. And Father, we pray that in our lives we'll look to you, we'll keep our eyes fixed upon you, that we might have this peace that passes all understanding, that we realize, Father, that you are a God of peace, and you can give us peace through any situation, through a pandemic, through a trial, through a hardship. No matter what we're facing in life, we can have peace when we trust in you. Father, we pray that you continue to bless your children, move in a mighty way in each life, and help each one of us to be honest with ourselves, look within our hearts and lives, and answer that question honestly. Are we peacemakers? All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I, I do want to remind you once again that we are coming up on an uh, election. And I do pray that you pray much about the election. And then I pray that you will vote. Uh, you will get out and vote your convictions. You know, as I, I say many times before, we, we're not out to, to vote for our pocketbook, but we're out to vote for our faith. If we believe that we are a Christian nation and that's who we want America to be, we have to attempt to put uh, men and women in office that more closely have our values, the values based upon God's word into political offices that they might lead our nation in a way that would be pleasing to God. I do pray that you have a great day and God bless.